Peex is a tool for interactive visual pattern search and sequential data that uses unsupervised deep representation learning for similarity comparison. Visually searching for patterns in sequential data can be challenging when the search space is large, the patterns are complex, or the query is difficult to formalize. To overcome these challenges, we need an effective feature representation that captures important visual properties for similarity comparison. The feature representation of the data is typically defined up front. While this is useful for finding specific patterns, it requires a deep understanding of the data and often does not generalize well. To improve upon existing pattern matching techniques in an unsupervised setting, we have developed a convolutional autoencoder model. Given some region of sequential data, the first part of our autoencoder model learns a latent representation that the second part of the model uses to reconstruct the input data. By enforcing a lower dimensional latent representation, the autoencoder needs to learn an abstraction that captures the important visual properties of the data, which can be more effective for pattern search than existing techniques, as we show in the paper. Additionally, to support interactive visual pattern search, we not only need a good matching technique, but also a system that is able to adopt to the user's perceived similarity. We have developed Peaks, a system that uses our novel representation learning technique and combines it with an active learning strategy to allow users to interactively train a classifier that learns what the important visual features are using binary relevance feedback. The interface of Peaks consists of four main components. At the top is the query view, which shows the region defining our search query. The view is pan and zoomable to allow free exploration of the entire data and features navigational cues to guide users to regions that exhibit patterns similar to our search query. Below the query view is the list view, which holds different regions of the data for comparison and labeling. Depending on the tab, the shown regions are either selected by our active learning strategy for exploration, as explained in the paper, or they're defined by the results of the trained classifier for exploitation. For debugging, it's also possible to look at the previously labeled or manually selected region. Each region here features three buttons for labeling them as either matching the search query, not matching the search query, or being inconclusive. At the top of the right side bars the embedding view which shows a 2D embedding to explore regions based on their latent representation. In this view, every region is represented as a dot and colored according to its label, where blue indicates a positive match and pink indicates a negative match. A secondary light gray to blue color map encodes dots by the classifier's prediction probability, where dark blue indicates that the classifier is certain that this region matches the search query. Also, the embedding view supports lasso-based brushing to manually select regions for comparison and labeling. Finally, at the bottom right is the progress view, which visualizes the classifier's uncertainty, the overall change in the prediction probabilities, and the convergence or divergence of the prediction probabilities for every training to help users to determine when to stop the labeling process. Here the inner and more saturated bar is relative to the set of already labeled regions and the outer bar is relative to all regions of the data. In the following, we demonstrate how peaks can be used to build a classifier for co-occurring but slightly shifted peak-like patterns. We start at the landing page, which shows two bar charts that visualize some property of the mouse genome. We begin by browsing to find regions showing slightly shifted peaks and select a good example by brushing to start the search. In order to build a classifier for our search query, we now need to provide feedback to the system in form of binary labels. As the search space is huge, we decide to sample regions in the data using our active learning sampling strategy. Here we label every region with a pattern that we perceive similar or dissimilar to our search query with a click on the corresponding buttons and ignore regions we are unsure about. As we reach the end of our sample set, we train a first classifier and retrieve a new set of samples. As we continue labeling regions and training classifiers, we see how the progress view on the lower right corner starts to visualize properties of our learned classifiers. For instance, here we can see that the uncertainty is gradually decreasing. After having labeled 66 regions, we decide to gain an overview of all regions 
for which we compute a UMAP embedding that is visualized in the embedding view. We switch to the prediction probability color map and see two neighborhoods with potential matches. Through a brief exploration, we find that most of the regions we labeled so far are scattered throughout these two neighborhoods. To investigate how well our trained classifier can distinguish between positive and negative matches, we turn our attention to the current results. We exclude our own labels and refine the predicted matches through further labeling. After we are satisfied with our refinement, we reorder the results such that the most uncertain region that are still considered matches are shown first, to better understand the recall of our classifier. Since most regions with a prediction probability around 0.5 do not match our search query, we increase the prediction probability threshold to 0.6, meaning that regions with a prediction probability below 0.6 are not considered matches anymore. We now see that the system warns us about potential conflicts between our labels and the predictions. We decide to first retrain our classifier to avoid time spending on conflicts that might get resolved through our most recently assigned labels. We continue labeling at the prediction probability boundary and since we are still not happy we increase the prediction probability threshold to 0.7. After another round of labeling and training we now see that the classifier was not able to resolve some false negative conflicts anymore. We initially labeled some regions as positive matches which are not considered matches anymore by the classifier. We correct our mistakes and change the labels for some of these regions. Taking a look at the prediction probability landscape in the embedding view, we're now going to explore the two neighborhoods with potential matches in more detail. Using the lasso tool, we select several regions at once to expand our labels according to the clusters in the learned latent space. In the progress view, we can see that the classifier does not change much anymore after retraining. And since we're happy with our current results, we bring our attention back to the entire dataset. The query view at the top allows us to freely browse the data and provides guidance through the classifier's prediction probabilities as indicated by the rectangular annotations, where dark blue represents strong matches. This way we can quickly find other regions in the sequential data that exhibit similar patterns to our search query and correlate these regions in terms of their sequential neighborhood. For more details about our technique, please visit peaks.lectures.de.